He enters his fourth season at the helm at Marquette, and for the first time, all of his players are just that, his recruits. Steve Wojciechowski is with me. Coach, thanks for your time. How was your summer? Had a great summer. Uh, you know, obviously got a chance to spend a lot of time with my family, uh, work with our guys who are here throughout most of the summer, and and uh, try to continue to improve our program and move it forward. What do you do for fun during the summer when you uh, get some time off? Well, I got a, a nine and seven year old boy, so we uh, I hang out with those guys, and and uh, they like doing normal kid stuff. So I follow right along. I gotta ask you here as you enter year four, when you took the job here, you have expectations. What has maybe been surprising or exceeding your expectations about being at Marquette? Well, it's a special place, and I knew that from a distance. Obviously, it's it's one of the best brands in college basketball, and I recognized that before I ever got here. Um, the support, obviously, has been terrific. The quality of people has just been overwhelmingly good, uh, from Dr. Lovell to Bill Scholl to the people that I work with throughout athletics to the greater school community. 325 three-pointers a year ago. And on top of that, you led the Big East in points per game with 82 and a half, 16 assists per game. How do you have, how do you generate that type of offensive success? Well, we had really good players and we had outstanding shooters. And on the offensive end last year, I thought we played very well together. You know, I don't, I'm not sure if our offense will be quite as powerful as it was last year. Uh, but I hope to have the same unselfishness as we displayed throughout the, the season. Uh, we have a long way to go in terms of improving our defense, and that's one of the things that we've talked a lot about our team about in the offseason and, and now in the preseason. You know, we have to do a great job protecting the paint, holding teams to one shot, contesting every shot, and really being connected as a defensive unit. Um, I'm not sure we did that uh, very well consistently at all last year. And in order for us to, to make another step forward as a program, you know, we, we have to continue to play unselfishly uh, the way we do on the offensive end, but we need to improve our defense. Marcus Howard's a freshman, Andrew Rousey, a transfer, and now going to be a redshirt senior. Those two combined to be quite a backcourt duo. How was that able to happen so quickly for them? Well, I think uh, in Marcus's case, I mean, he has a maturity that is well beyond his years. And once he got through the initial few weeks of the season, uh, you really started to see who he was. And, and uh, who he is is an outstanding kid, uh, somebody who plays very hard, uh, special abilities on the offensive end, who grew each week as a player. And then I think Andrew had to knock the rust off the redshirt year. And so once you saw him get comfortable, uh, you saw his scoring ability. And then at the end of the year when we made our push, uh, those two guys were in the lineup a lot, and it proved to be a very successful combination for us. You talked about the maturity of Marcus Howard. Meanwhile, Sam Hauser comes in, and he leads the team in minutes last season. Why were you able to rely upon him for that kind of minutes load? Well, I trust him, and he earned that trust through his day-to-day play and practice and and really he was as consistent a player we had on a day-to-day -day basis as anyone on the team right from the very start which I'm not sure I've ever been able to say about a freshman before and he's a he's a darn good player too which helps let's completely go off the map off the court growing up favorite tv show wow uh you know probably sports center really any favorite is that, anchor? Is that surprising? No, not at all. Uh, you know, I kind of, I, when I was a kid, it was it was kind of the Dan Patrick, Keith Overman era, and those guys were uh, legends, I think. When you're on the road and you do get a little bit of spare time, is it a book series that you like? Do you like to read, or is it more of a TV show? What? You know, I, I enjoy podcasts. Yeah. You know, I, I not that I don't enjoy reading, uh, but, you know, I just put, put the earphones in and, and listen to – you know, whatever podcast that's that's out there. What do you like? Um, you know, I, Ryan Hawk, The Learning Leader, is one that I really like. Uh, the Chronicles of Reddick uh, by J.J. Reddick, who I coached at Duke, is one I really uh, enjoy. Uh, there's a whole host of them. Favorite place to go in Milwaukee to eat? We have that as a fan question. Yeah, well, if I'm, if I'm going for steaks, I'll usually hit up Moe's Steakhouse. If I'm uh, going for Italian, I'll hit up the Calderon Club. Uh, if it's a if it's a nice summer night, I may hit the rooftop of the Journeyman. So those would be a couple of the, the options. I know that Mike Shashevsky is probably at the top of this list, but are there other idols that you really look up to for inspiration? You know, I think my folks. You know, uh, you know, I've been very fortunate to be a part of great teams 
uh, throughout my life. And the best team I've ever been on was the first team I was ever on, and that's the Wojciechowski team. And, you know, that standard would set by my mom and dad. I'll leave you with this. If you had a message to your fan base heading into 2017-18, what is it? That we need them. You know, we, we, we have a tremendously tough non-conference schedule. Obviously, the Big East schedule speaks for itself. Uh, it's the last year of the Bradley Center. Uh, we need this to be uh, the best year yet in terms of support and, uh, you know, how they bring out the energy in the game. Coach, thanks so much. Thank you.